Hey guys, it's Morgan coming back to you with another weekly schlag here at Highland Cycles in Montrose, Colorado, where we show you all kinds of cool dirt bike stuff. Uh, we are a dirt bike shop located in the heart of what I consider the best place in the United States to ride dirt bikes. Um, Montrose is on the western slope of Colorado. It's a beautiful place. It's super awesome. When you get a chance, come ride with me. Um, this is our weekly schlag slash it's shop vlog. That's where that came from. And uh, we show you all kinds of like repair things, things that are blown up, tech tips, all that good stuff. Uh, but if you're new here, make sure you go check out the rest of our channel. We do ride videos, review videos, instructional videos, all kinds of good stuff. Um, this week's schlag should be a lot of fun. Zach is not here, sadly, um, because he is still remodeling his uh, house with his parents. Um, Leander is here today. She won't be here the rest of the week. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, if that sounds like fun, stick with us. Here we go. All right, guys and girls, here is what's first on the list is a 2021 Beta 200 RR. I really like these bikes. I rode a 22 down in Texas at a demo event at a, it was a race we went to. Really, really like this bike. I like small bores. Um, I've loved my 125. This was next level as far as torque and things like that. It, motor was just really, really good. Um, also, my 125 is still for sale if you're interested. Um, I've brought the price down to six thousand um, dollars. It's probably as low as I'm going to go now, but uh, anyway, if you're interested, send me an email, Morgan at Highland-Cycles.com. Uh, anyway, this gentleman bought this bike just recently and wants us to go through it and get a good baseline, so he knows everything is done, knows that it's working right, knows it's running right. Also, going to put some uh, hand guards on it. Uh, going to put a spark arrestor on it, um, and maybe a rear disc guard. If we can find one in time, uh, or air filter, all kinds of good stuff. So I want to bring you in and show you what all we look at when someone's got a bike and he wants to, like I said, set a baseline. He knows that everything's perfect, that he can then go forward and keep it maintained himself. So uh, I'm going to start by pulling the air filter out. It's nice of beta to put that there. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. All right, air filter. All right, it's kind of weird modeled look, but <laughs> um, no big deal. Pull that out. Looks nice and clean. Hats off to whoever maintained this air filter. Great job. All right, I'm gonna go get that clean and drying. Um, that's quick. I've mentioned this before, I think. Quick uh, professional mechanics tip is when you're working on something and you know you're doing the air filter, start with the air filter. Because if you start there, um, you can have it drying and going while you do everything else, and then hopefully it's dry by the time you go put it back on. If you wait till the last, you end up waiting and waiting and waiting. So uh, anyway, get that done, and we'll start checking everything else. I don't think I've noticed on any other betas. You guys should chime in and let me know if this is only on the 200 um, RRs or if it's on the new other new 300s and 250s. But pretty interesting, kind of cool setup. The slave cylinder for the clutch is here in the cover. So banjo bolt right here, line goes up to the master cylinder, and then there's a bleeder. I, you know, I'm like changing oil, putting oil in here. I'm like, wait, why is that bleeder? Oh. So the slave must be part of the cover, um, which is kind of cool. Um, for some reason, it's kind of not that cool. So the cool part is it's all slick and neat and clean and all hidden away. I don't love <coughs> the fact that it means if something goes wrong with the slave cylinder, you have to replace the whole clutch cover. <laughs> um, also don't love the fact that if you break the clutch cover um, on a rock or something, which is relatively common since it kind of sticks out far, that you then have to probably, I'm sure it's relatively expensive um, to buy that compared to just a normal clutch cover. Because most clutch covers, even from KTM, are pretty cheap. I'm assuming that they, if they have a slave cylinder built in, it's going to be a little more expensive. I also don't like that it's a little more exposed um, than the way a KTM is because this is kind of sticking out here, out wide, whereas on a KTM, come over here, there's a Husky, same thing. It's tucked in nice and tight. Now, obviously, this has 
potential issues with uh, chains and other things. Nothing's perfect. There's no perfect design out there, but um, yeah, it's just interesting. I'm not saying it's good or bad or whatever. Um, just new, new to me. I haven't seen that before. So let me know if you've seen that, if it's on just the 200s, if it's on all the new bikes. I don't know. Anyway, uh, time to check the spokes on this, which is a really important thing to do on a newer bike. Like I said, I think I mentioned before, this only has 12 hours on it. So I don't think the previous owner did any maintenance other than <clears throat> maybe change the oil or something like that. Um, so it's uh, super fresh. And one of the things that usually loosens up are spoke nipples. So we're gonna check that. Um, I've already done uh, lots of videos on that, but real quick recap. I like to tighten every third spoke. So I'll, for instance, start with this spoke. Then we'll go one, two, three, tighten that one. One, two, three, all the way around the wheel and then move one spoke over all the way around the wheel one spoke over move all the way around the wheel that way you get them all and what that does is if you tighten them down like that it keeps you from getting the wheel way out of wax like you don't have to pay too much attention to the true of the wheel or the tension on the spokes just as long as you get them nice and tight if you do it in that pattern <clears throat> all right guys so uh i've been uh, working on the beta she's over there anyway uh i've got the spokes all tightened up front and rear were both had a bunch of loose spokes not like rattling loose but loose uh, so we got that all chewed up i uh, went through touched every motor mount bolt subframe bolt um, pinch bolt caliper bolts everything i could get to on it uh, without going inside the motor <laughs> and uh, made sure those were all tight and torque the specs so we're all good there um, changed the oil um, took out the whatever beta had in there motul something which is i'm sure is fine oil but I like Gear Saver 80 weight um, from Bell Ray, way better. It's just really good stuff. I got a great story way back here on the channel somewhere talking about why I like it so much. If you guys want to hear that story again, comment below. I'll give you that story again. But anyway, it's really good stuff. Got hand guards installed. Check those out. I think those turned out pretty good. A Cherbis. Um, I forget which version they are, but anyway, they look nice. Got those. And now I figure since we've been having a rash of poor air filter maintenance situations again here at the shop, it's time we revisit that. So let's go over what we do. Uh, took this air filter, we cleaned it. It was stained, couldn't get that out of it. But anyway, it's all clean now. Um, cleaned it with uh, in the parts washer with solvent. Then I cleaned, then I took some Fabuloso and water, sprayed it down wash that out rinse that out and i've let it dry now it's totally dry now we're going to take our bell ray foam filter oil pour it into our bucket here take our filter and we're going to dip it and we don't i don't go just crazy i just kind of go let it float around on there and then we massage it in and we get it nice and massaged all into the foam until the foam all has the same hue of blue front and back. And if there's like a little spot right here, dip in there since we got gloves on, we just mush that in, flip her inside out. And we just get the oil on there. Now, you don't want to do too much. You don't want to make it too thick because it can't affect the way it runs. But if you're going to air on one side, whether it be too much or too little, definitely go too much because the worst thing that happens with it being too much is that the bike runs, you know, like it's running richer than choke on. But no big deal. So, <clears throat> getting close. Hey, Yep. All nice and blue. Then we take our filter cage, which with these betas is kind of funky because it's not exactly symmetrical like on the KTM. So you just want to make sure you get that in there right. So we hook these. Then I like to take some grease. Not everybody does. I do. I don't care about the mess. I care more about keeping dirt out of my motor and all my customers' motors. Uh, 
nice thing about this style and the KTM style, this goes into a nub, this goes into a nub. There's really no way to screw it up, so we're good to go. Right on, guys. So, other than the FFF silencer that we're waiting for, should have here tomorrow, uh, this beta is ready to rock and roll. Well, I'm going to test ride it. Um, he wrote it, says it runs great, so I'm assuming it does. I will uh, take it out, though, and test ride it because he wanted me to to make sure I like the way it runs. I'm sure it runs great. Um, the other thing that I found, because, again, this only has 12 hours on it, so it probably has not been ridden um, recently. I think this gentleman uh, bought this bike, rode it, didn't enjoy riding dirt bikes and just, just selling it. Um, but I found that the tires were all both very low, um, like probably four or five pounds. So aired those up to like 13, 14 pounds, which is what I like for around here. If you're going to run air, 13 to 14 pounds seems like it's a good, safe amount. It keeps you from getting pinch flats, and you uh, you know, still get pretty good traction. So yeah. Anyway, bay is all ready to go. I like these bikes a lot. I will come in and touch base on the uh, turbine core uh, when we get that. Hopefully tomorrow, just to show you guys kind of difference between that and like the screen style and why I like these so make sure you stay tuned um, anyway on to the next job all right guys next up is a set of forks off of uh, Honda of some kind I honestly don't know uh, the gentleman who is having me do them just had his uh, wife like well I, I'm assuming wife a female drop it off for him I'm um, assuming it's his wife or girlfriend or whatever um, anyway, and uh, they are, the important thing is these are Showa uh, 47s, I think, hang on. And just in case you don't know, like this, first of all, this channel is all about just teaching everybody everything, and there's a lot of you guys out there that know uh, more than me, know a ton, um, you know, what are very, very well versed, know all kinds of things. There's a lot of you guys here on YouTube that don't know anything yet because you're brand new to the sport or you're brand new to working on things or whatever. So I want this channel to be for all of you. Um, the guys have been doing it forever and the guys that are brand new to it. So uh, in that, I'm going to be explaining things all the way you know during this channel, during these schlogs that some of you are like, yeah, no, I know that dude. Where other you guys are like, oh man, that's awesome. So um, also there are no dumb questions. If you have a question, please comment below. Not only will I answer it, and get back to you uh, if I have if I know the answer also um, it helps the community because other people might know what you're talking about and be able to reply to you and things like that uh, and also on top of all that it really helps the channel if you guys are commenting and interacting with us because it helps uh, YouTube see that people are interested and will put my videos in front of more people and that will help the whole community because we're trying to spread the gospel of two wheels so uh, anyway when you're talking about size of forks, this is the size they're talking about. This uh, inner tube um, is the size that they're talking about. So uh, when they say 48 millimeters, it's 48. That's just the diameter. These are 47s. So 47 millimeter Showa, pretty standard fork. Um, been around, been around a long time. Um, decent fork. It's not the best. Not as good as a KYB. SSS with the same idea. It's a twin chamber fork. So yeah, let's take these things apart. I think I have a full in-depth video, so I'm not going to shoot the whole thing in depth, um, but we'll just touch on everything here that's important on the slug. All right, guys, I'm going to take a break from the forks real fast uh, because I want to get this done. We got the FMF Turbine Core 2.1 for the Beta 200 RR. Uh, pretty excited about this. This is a sweet sweet spark arrester um so here's the thing uh out west here and we ride on public land and all the public land requires you to have some sort of spark arrester uh, but it has to be usfs approved um spark arrester i don't really know why especially if you're riding on blm land but anyway whatever that's the thing that's the rules uh, i like to obey those rules because um not because i think a fire has ever been started out of the back of a dirt bike two-stroke or four-stroke um i know fires have been started off the header pipes of uh, four-stroke dirt bikes but anyway whatever it's one of those rules that uh if we obey um then the cops police whatever rangers out there uh they see us in a good light if we just you know follow their rules so 
That being said, I ride two strokes because I love two strokes. And the screen style two stroke spark arresters totally suck because they clog up. Even if you have your bike running just right on the money, no spooge, whatever, it will eventually clog that screen and run like crap. Then you gotta take it out, burn it out, whatever. It's a pain in the butt. Um, that is why I personally like the Turbine Core. It, instead of having a screen, um, unfortunately I don't have one apart and it's really hard to show you down in here, but instead of a screen, there's a thing that looks like a propeller down in right about here where these rivets are and the blades of the propeller spin out like that. Idea is that if any sparks or anything like that come down the pipe, they come down this way, they hit that and they spin out and into some packing that's in here. Um, the reason I like them is they don't clog up. They do eventually clog up after years and years and years, um, but you should be cleaning it and taking care of it more often than that. Um, but they don't clog like a screen and they're way better. Uh, right now, FMF is really hard to get. Um, it's a super nightmare, um, but fortunately we were able to find uh, three of these on planet Earth, so I got one for this gentleman. I'm gonna slap it on. I don't think I need to show you guys how to do that. It's super simple. Um, two bolts. We're gonna take the, um, there's grommets in here. We're gonna take those out of here, put them into those holes, slide it on and be good to go. Then we'll get back to the forks. So if we, come on, focus. There we go. So we look right in here. You see, these are shims. It's kind of hard to show you. Let me see if I can show you how they move. I don't know how easy it's going to be. Anyway, it's hard to tell, but they flex. And I've shown this on other videos. The oil comes through here, out here, and it flexes those shims. The same width on this mid valve uh, shim stack. You have focus. There we go. You have a shim stack there, and it flexes. Now, if you're not going to do it yourself, have a shop that does things like take this all the way apart and blow through this. Like one way that I do this on a uh, job. One second. So one way, so we're gonna come in here, we're gonna break clean the heck out of that. Then we're gonna take our air and we're gonna and it's impossible for me to show you. Like I don't know, maybe we'll see if this will show it. Focus. You can see that moving those shims. So that's blowing those little particles out of there. Now, if I take a fork apart and it's super, super dirty, this oil was not, this internal oil was not very dirty. If I take it apart and it's super, super dirty, that whole valve comes apart, each shim gets clean, put it all back together. We have to charge a little bit more money for that, but we make it good. Um, this oil was super clean, so we're all good. That's one benefit to twin chamber or closed chamber forks is that inner part only has to deal with the wear and stuff from this piston band and the outside or the inside of this tube which again if the oil is clean isn't much whatever it perpetuates itself so if you keep things clean it gets less dirty it causes less problems uh you have less to deal with it costs you less money all that stuff so anyway. next on the lift is the venerable tw200 uh, i was actually just talking to another customer who's picking up his bike uh 300 um uh, Husqvarna and uh, we're kind of laughing about these things um, just you know they're not really powerful and all that stuff but it's funny there's a huge resurgence of loving on the TW200 right now with the hunting community because um, you know obviously you can put a huge rack in the back and you actually get a rack to the front uh, and then you can basically haul an elk out <laughs> I mean it might take you a couple trips but uh, it's crazy and the gearing is usually you know it's super, super low, so that usually will get you up kind of anything um, narrower than an ATV and all that good stuff. So uh, this one is here because uh, the gentleman, uh, his son has one. It's a 2017, uh, and it runs great at altitude, has no problems, whatever. He bought this one. It's a 2020 uh, used, I think. Anyway, yeah, used, and it, uh, it blew up. Or maybe it blew up right before he bought it and he bought it from the... Anyway, whatever. 
at some point in its past, it blew up like bad, blew up. Uh, motor shredded. I don't know exactly what happened, but it was not good. Um, and got it built, whatever. It seemed good. I think he, maybe he did own it because he said when he got it back, it ran great. And then now it's starting to run more like it did right before it blew up. So that's interesting. I just took it for a spin. Um, it does feel like it's down on power. It doesn't feel, I mean, again, these aren't big powerhouses anyway, but it didn't feel right. It felt like it just kind of wouldn't get out of its own way. Uh, I mean, it would eventually accelerate up to almost 60, but it took a really long time. Uh, so we're gonna start with a compression test. I got the spark plug out and go grab my tester. All right, guys, so I just did a compression test. Um, this is leaking down, so anyway, it was up over, Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, it was up over 125 PSI, which should be good for this little engine. So that's a good thing. Um, that feels like, you know, that's appropriate. So now we got to figure out what's going on, why it's run funny. So um, the next thing we're going to do is check the carburetor. Um, I, what I'm going to do now, though, is uh, get the seat and uh, tank off of it. animals uh, not getting any work done it's like UFC here <laughs> sometimes anyway I'm gonna take the seat and tank off uh, and get in there get that carburetor off and take a look um, yeah it's uh, like I said I think the compression seems good I am gonna check and see make sure I'm not crazy make sure it's not uh, supposed to be higher than that but I'm pretty sure that's about what it's supposed to be uh, for this it's just a little simple motor so anyway um, I'll check back in when I get that carb off Okay, so I've got the carburetor out of the ultrasonic and everything. Uh, I did get a new jet. Um, this is the old one. This is the 128. Uh, the gentleman actually brought a 122. Ah, excuse me. A 122 in. So um, I'm going to try that. And, uh, you know, maybe that will help. Um, I'm really hoping <laughs> because nothing else seems to really be the issue. I checked. By the way, I checked compression numbers. I got online, Googled around. Looks like... 128 is what they expect out of that thing and I had 125 out of my gauge which isn't necessarily uh, the most accurate I don't think it's pretty old so <clears throat> you know that's right in there uh, that's good uh, and that's a good thing I'd rather be chasing some weird carburetor thing than a motor thing so really happy with all that stuff I'm gonna get that done but first I gotta change wheel bearings in that lovely uh, KTM 300 XCW that is uh, Wes Dietz from No Pro Heroes. Again, Wes, uh, he's been on a couple of my things. Make sure you check him out on all the socials. No Pro Heroes on everything. Anyway, check that stuff out. So we're going to use the SKF seals. And it comes with this, or excuse me, we're going to use the SKF bearings seal and new uh, spacer kit. They're pretty sweet. This one's $56.99 for the old school rear. I say old school because it uses the smaller axle. Um, instead of the, I guess it's not even old school, it's a 22, it's just more of the W axle and not the um, SX, XC axle. But uh, anyway, I think they're actually changing that back to the smaller axle because they realize they need more flex. But anyway, I go on. So we get that done, we'll put this carburetor back together and then we'll uh, check some stuff. But um, oh yeah, quick, real fast guys, um, just trying to educate here. Like, by the way, I would love some feedback on these schlogs. Uh, if you guys are watching this all the way till this point, please give me some feedback. Comment below what you think, uh, what you want to hear more of, what you want to hear less of, what you want to see more and less of. Um, if it's interesting that I'm going to tell you about this, um, this stuff is pretty cool. It's Z-Max Lube. Uh, it's really good lube. It goes on really lightweight and clear, and then it sets up, still clear, but sets up more like a grease. So it's pretty cool. Uh, but Wes had some squeaky levers that are no longer squeaky uh, because I just use a little bit of this. 
you kind of spray it in this comes with the straw which is nice get it in tight uh, I hit all the pivot points the foot peg uh, shifter bray anyway everything that pivots and it's really nice I also use it on wheel bearings sometimes if I'm changing tires I'm just gonna pop the seal out real fast I'll spray this in there again it sets up like a grease it's pretty cool um, you guys can we sell this here at the shop uh, you can also just buy it online the other really cool thing is focus made in the USA rare these days so I'm happy to support anything made in the USA they also make the chain lube that I like um, boom also made in the US ZMAX chain lube we sell a ton of this here um, we have all kinds of good stuff so check them out and they're not sponsoring the video they're just I just like their product so and I'm gonna get these wheel bearings done I filmed that a million times so uh, yeah we'll check back in hopefully uh, with a really well running TW200 all right, guys, real quick, I want to show you uh, one way I check to make sure that the diaphragm is good on these. Um, so if you can see, let's see, there you go, you can see the slide. I'm going to take your air hose and blow across this. See, uh, I'll try to get a better view of that. Oh, there we go. So what that's proving is that there's no hole in that diaphragm because when the air comes across it lowers the pressure above the slide and it lets it raise up and if there's a hole in that diaphragm it won't lift that slide so you know that's good go install this thing we'll get back to you and let you know how it's running all right guys next on the lift is this 2017 300 xcw uh a carbureted lovely carbureted motorcycle um I'm replacing the throttle cable and doing the jet black gasket on there, so no huge thing here. I've already filmed that lots of times, but I want to show you a quick tech tip. If you have one of these newer KTMs with the head stays that are normally here, uh, and you're working on the carburetor, it's 345 Torx to get that out of the way, and then boom, carburetor, super easy to deal with. So I highly recommend just yanking the seat and tank off, get that head stay out of the way, and it makes your life way easier. Um, I'm going to yank this uh, carb off because it's been leaking gas, and I think I know. I think it's actually the O-ring on the needle and seat. But while I'm in there, I'm going to go ahead and do the jet, uh, excuse me, jet block gasket. And then obviously, while it's off, it's easy to go ahead and replace the throttle cable, which is bent. You can see right up there. Uh, yeah, and then this will be done. We'll get on to the next thing. All right, guys, that's the end of the week, the end of the schlog. Um, it's kind of a crazy end of the week here, so I hope I didn't miss anything that I said I was going to get to. If I did, super duper sorry. Uh, it's kind of nuts. Uh, Zach was back for the day at Saturday. Um, now I'm going to be gone for a week. So uh, when you see this, I don't know if it will have been already a week and then I edited it. I don't know, but whatever. Sorry for missing a week of the schlog. I hope you guys like this one. We got lots of work coming, guys, so make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe. If you haven't yet, just do yourself a big favor because uh, we do all kinds of fun stuff here. Just ask the people that have been here all these years uh, with us having a ton of fun. Anyway, I hope you guys get out and spread the gospel of two wheels, and I desperately hope that what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring you guys to work on, but more importantly, get out and ride your dirt bikes!